Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm returning to Rule the Waves. It's part, oh goodness, I lost count, I think part 7 um, of my Rule the Waves Let's Play. Uh, it is a succession series that I'm doing with Tortuga Power and XTRG. I have not yet handed anything off to them yet, so I started the game in 1900. We just concluded a successful war versus Italy in which we took over Sardinia. Uh, there was one major fleet action that more or less ended in a draw, although we lost, what, like five destroyers that you can see here. There was one other action we lost a light cruiser in, uh, but at the end of the day, we did decimate Italian, or not decimate, but we did do some serious damage to Italian light forces, despite the lacking of a uh, decisive naval battle. And the end result was that we were able to take Sardinia. We didn't get any spoils from the Italian Navy. I'd kind of hoped we might get to take one of their battleships, but that didn't end up uh, occurring in the peace treaty. I had also hoped that we might be able to take Eritrea, but we weren't able to take Italy's only colony in Africa. So, unfortunately, all we got was Sardinia, but it's the most valuable province of Italy after Sicily. Obviously, you can't take over uh, Italy proper, so Sicily was 12 VPs. I think the only way you can take that over is with a successful invasion, which you can't really control. Um, I think you have a better likelihood of an invasion if you have a, a massive, overwhelming preponderance of forces. Uh, but aside from that, there's no real direct control over an invasion of an island, which is something I would like to see Rule the Waves 2 address. Like, if you're really the Jackie Fisher or the Winston Churchill or, you know, some high-up admiralty figure, you probably could get away with less tactical control of the battles, which they won't do, and I know why. Uh, but you'd have more strategic control over how the war is fought, I would think. Um, so it's almost like during the peace, you're Jackie Fisher, and during war, you're not really anyone until a battle occurs, and then you're, well, I guess you're, you're kind of a, a high-level figure because you can move fleets around. But you really have no control over where things fight, but then when the battle happens, you command at a tactical level. It doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but again, everybody wants to see the ships they design actually fight. So I can understand it. I just don't necessarily agree it, agree with it. Now, this is going to be kind of broken up into 30-minute segments. This is a live stream, though, so um, it's probably going to be, you know, I'll probably stream out the remainder of my turn and then break this up into videos, uh, which I'll, I'll split apart. I will keep this audio, though, so uh, if you hear me occasionally talking to people in the chat, that's just because this original recording is from a live stream. Now, as we uh, finished up last time around, again, you can see tensions are relatively low for everybody. If we look at the naval budget of France, it's actually very low, uh, only $208 million, slightly less than Germany. Uh, I guess it's not very low. The only country it's lower than is Great Britain, who has a massive advantage in their naval budget. Right now, we're not building any battleships, though we have 15 in service, which makes us the second most powerful nation. Germany's quickly catching up. Uh, and the United States as well are both building four. They're at ten right now. In terms of heavy cruisers, we've got nine. So we commissioned one of those brand new heavies uh, of the, what are they called again, the La Touche de Travel class. Uh, we have another one under construction, although that construction was halted during the war to save funds. Uh, it is the Marce Marseille, uh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's a 4 8 incher with 12 6 inches and 14 4 inches. Right now, we've got a little bit of a budget surplus, but again, that's with this big 2 million a month cruiser halted. She's still 16 months away, so if she does come into service and we fight, it'll be right near the end of my time. I would like to see how these ships last, though. I probably will only build two of them. We're also building some light cruisers of the La Fossoir class, uh, which did very well for us in the war. This is 8 6-inch guns, 10 3-inch guns. It's 5,100 tons and can make 23 knots. Limited armor, but it's a light cruiser. Only a couple torpedo tubes. That might be something that we want to see if we can improve. And then we're building some of our new destroyers. None of these new warships, the Lavasur did, but none of the other warships saw action in the war. However, our light, our light forces did pretty well in that last combat. All of our victories came in minor engagements, and our light cruisers uh, proved surprisingly durable in stand-up fights against the Italians. So I do like the idea of a cruiser-heavy force. I do like the idea with some heavy cruisers, and I'm tossing around the idea of developing kind of a semi-dreadnought similar to the Danton. You know, we're getting into that late pre-dreadnought period of 1903, so it might make some sense uh, to consider building one last class of pre-dreadnought battleships before the dreadnought strikes. 
Uh, right now, no one is building any dreadnoughts. Uh, only pre-dreadnoughts are being built. And I know everyone's going to say, you know the dreadnoughts coming. Don't build anything. Just save your money for something that'll matter. But to me, that's too gamey. There's no way a country would be like, you know what? We're not going to build a ship because there might be an invention down the line. It also could leave us with a gap if there was no other war fought before dreadnoughts are really main line. So I think we need to consider it. But right now, frankly, you know, we don't have the money. We do. We are going to go ahead and resume construction on the Marseille, and uh, it will put us in the red. But we've got a comfortable budget of 17 million. If we take a look at the research notes, we can see here that we've done quite well on the machinery development. We're already on level three. Uh, we've made some progress elsewhere. I'm disappointed that we haven't done anything on the naval gun side. Uh, one thing that's holding me back from designing a new battleship is we have made no improvements with our main guns, and I really don't want to build a battleship with a negative two main gun of 13 inches or even a negative one 12 inch. I'd like something a little bit better. Um, so maybe the cue for a new design will be if we come up with a new design for our artillery because that's also one of the things that's the most difficult. You can upgrade a ship and modernize its machinery and stuff, but it doesn't, you know, it's really hard to up-gun up a ship. You can do it, I believe. You can bring, like, a quad turret down to a double and go from, like, 13 inches to 15 inches or 11 inches to 13 inches or something like that. Um, but why would we ever have a single-gun turret? I don't know, and I don't really see the need to do that. So I'm going to wait on designing anything right now. I'm just going to go ahead and jump ahead one turn now that we're in the red, and hopefully we'll, we'll be balanced back up quickly here because uh, we've got a lot of destroyers that are going to be coming off the ways as well as a, a light cruiser. So we should be back in the black here shortly, so let's go ahead and jump. So we've got some destroyers being commissioned into the Navy. And heavy cruiser, the La Toc de Tavel, just finished its working up and is now into the Navy. Okay, uh, meanwhile, we have more ships in Northern Asia than our bases can support. So we probably, now that we're out of this war here, we probably need to look at reallocating our forces. So if we go to the map, let's see here, it doesn't show anything in the red, but if we drag this out a bit, north, where was it? Not Europe. Northeastern Asia. We don't have anything there. What was the message again? More ships in Northeast Asia than our bases can support. We don't have anything in Northeast Asia, so that's odd. Um, I think, and all of our bases look okay. So, I'm not sure what that was all about. I would say we probably want to move some more forces back into the into the channel now that the war in the Med is over. So we'll go ahead and bring the Trident classes. We're going to go ahead and move them back to Northern Europe. Uh, just because who knows, maybe the Germans will get frisky. And let's see, these guys are all in the med. We'll put some of our destroyers back. So we're going to move these guys back to the North Atlantic. And I don't think I have any of my ships moving in Northern Asia. If we take a look across here, let's take a look at the location. There's nothing. Oh, wait, there are two ships in Northeast Asia. Okay. These must have been commerce raiders that ended up there somehow. Um, I think given their heavy cruisers, we probably want to recall them, I'd say, back to Northern Europe. Um, we'll make that their destination. So they're coming back to Northern Europe. Um, one of them has a star. I think that means it has damage. Probably from the, the war and the patrol overseas, it needs some repairs. Um, these were our other heavy cruisers that we started with. Four, eight inches, 14, six inches. These are damn good cruisers. She's got a battle star too, the Brooks. Uh, she fought in at least one engagement. Um, I believe that was one of the, the commerce rating engagements, but I could be wrong. Um, unrest level at two, I believe that jumped up because we helped move some mercenaries into Italy to try and foment unrest, but uh, I was surprised with the way the war ended because the Italians actually agreed to a negotiated peace, and I've never had that. Anytime I ever ask for harsher terms, I've always had the other country's government collapse before they agree to harsher terms, uh, but in this case, they didn't, so great. All right, we should... Uh... I'm okay having a relatively weak Northern Europe. I don't intend to fight England no matter what. Uh, Germany is another matter, but, you know, we can always race over to Northern Europe if we have to, if Germany looks like they're about to be at war. Otherwise, I feel like Austria or Italy um, or, or one of those countries would be more likely to go to war with us. 
Um, you can see here we're back in the black. We're at a $750,000 in the black. And let's see here again. We've got 15 battleships again. We're going to have 10 heavy cruisers. We'll have 18 light cruisers when that's all done. And we've got, we'll have 56 destroyers. So, I mean, to be honest, we also have 20 submarines, which I'm not thrilled about carrying these, but they're damn cheap. And I know, you know, they can be useful in a war. Submarines seem very effective in a war at uh, sinking enemy merchantmen, much more effective than raiders. So we'll just leave them. They're cheap. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump ahead another month. More destroyers commissioned to the Navy. Okay, the Prime Minister wants to hold an international naval gathering with a sailing regatta in competition. This will strengthen our international standing and lessen tensions, but the money to finance the event will be taken out of the naval budget. What's my reaction? This is not good. a good time for such an event. All money needs to be allocated to buying warships. Well, we're not really buying any new ones yet. The Navy supports the excellent initiative to foster international understanding. I don't really care about lowering tensions, but it does increase my prestige, and obviously the goal of the game is to have as high a prestige as possible, so I'll go ahead and accept that. Um, plus, you know, we've got a little bit of money. Okay, so that went through, and now you can see here most of our destroyers are done being constructed. Uh, our light cruisers are also mostly done. I'm debating retiring the... Um, some of our older destroyers here. Let's see here. Type. So we've got three classes of destroyers. The Brand Bilbas is our uh, most modern, the 600 tonner. We've got some 400 tonners, the Frond class. I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've got twelve of these things. They only have short range and cramped accommodations. So they're pretty crappy ships, but they are cheap at 9000 a month. Um, I'm half tempted to just scrap them all and build some new of the Renault Boss, uh, the 600 tonners, but it's probably not really worth it, right? Well, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. Um, what do we want to do? I'm kind of tempted, you know, I, I, after the last war, I've kind of fallen in love with light cruisers. And battleships are expensive, and um, I probably should build another battleship class. What do you guys think? Should we build a new light cruiser class that kind of succeeds the Lavasuir? Or should we build a, like, Danton-class semi-dreadnought that has huge secondary batteries uh, with a, a moderate uh, main battery. I'd really like to see some development on naval guns before we do that. But what do you guys think? We can't build a battle cruiser yet, Patrick, because we don't have we haven't gotten to the the dreadnought era yet. Um, okay, let's take a look here. Let's see what we can design. So, if we auto designed a battleship, I don't really like thirteen. I don't. I hate the idea of such crappy main guns at a negative two. I almost would rather do a, two, a twelve inch gun, which is what all our battleships are so far. So you know, you could argue, oh, you're being consistent. So shell manufacturers can use the same whatever. If you want to have like a, a real life argument on why you do that, you'd have ten inch secondary guns in fourteen double turrets. I think that would be awesome. Um, actually, make it sixteen, so there's four on each side, um, and. That's kind of an interesting alignment. Now, obviously, that's a heavy, heavy ship. But that's only 14,000 tons, and we can go up to 20,000. So I think what we might do... Uh-oh. Oops. Um, I think what we might do is... Let's make it a 16,000 ton ship. The armor here is a little bit light. It's also narrow. I'd rather have a normal armor belt. It's much more, it's much heavier, but it gives you better protection. So, and I think I'd like a 11 inch main belt with a four or five inch extended belt, two and a half on deck, well, three on deck, we'll say to stop plunging fire, one and a half on deck extended. Conning tower should be 11 inches. 
Turrets should be 11 inches. Turret top should probably be three to be consistent with the deck armor. And secondaries, I'd say maybe five inches, because those are some big secondary guns. They need some protection. Now, the speed's only 18 knots. Let's make it 19, actually. Whoa, why is it going down? Okay, clicking the wrong button. And you can see here, holy crap, we need a lot more weight. Uh, those are the medium range chip. Uh, she'd be named a little redoubtable or whatever. Um, it has very limited tertiary guns. We probably want some more, actually, if you consider the fact that, um, you know, we'd have almost no defense against torpedo attack without something under five inches. So it's saying we need 3,000 additional tons. What if we do that? What if we make her a 19... Oh, jeez. So we can make her a 20,000 ton. She's still too heavy! Oh, lame. This is like my dream battleship right now for what I can build. And that's even with a 12-inch main battery. Uh, we could drop some weight by lowering the main gun um, ammo. Ammo's a little bit low. Ship's overweight. That makes it illegal. We could cut the torpedo tubes, but we're still 800 tons overweight. And our maximum dockyards are 20,000 tons. Uh, holy crap. Austria-Hungary is a 25,000-ton dry dock? What the hell are they doing? Um, Great Britain's actually only a thousand tons ahead of us. Um, ah, I really wanted some super, super, I know this would be ridiculously expensive and, and we'd only build a few, but, um, it's still, is, uh, is kind of awesome. Um, that's probably way too heavy belt extended too. Like realistically belt extended is not covering any vitals. So you could cut that down to maybe four inches. The deck, I'm guessing you could get away with two and a half inch deck armor. Um, that saves a bit of weight. You could probably cut the conning tower down to 10 inches and the turrets down to 10 inches. You're less likely to, you're a little bit more likely to have um, a turret get knocked out, but 10 inches is still much stronger than most of the ships I see. And if you drop the extended deck to an inch, which I don't know if I like, but I don't think there's any vitals that you're risking, you could get the ship in line at 20,000 tons. I think it's a decent design. You could still increase the ammo a bit and everything's okay i don't know if i like this design though i feel like it compromised a little bit too much on armor and i really would like a better main gun um hmm <sighs> i mean i could cut the torpedo tubes too but again i'm gonna wait on this i know i just wasted all of your time designing this battleship but i'm gonna wait and not design that battleship we'll go another month or two and uh, we'll see where we're at. We'll just kind of use this excess cash. We're actually going to expand our docks. So we'll spend $3 million expanding the docks. That'll take a year um, to get a, a bigger dockyard if we really want to go that ultimate semi-dreadnought. Okay, so a light cruiser being commissioned. Scientists report that they're currently baffled by the problems of capped armored piercing shells. Okay. Um, stolen industrial secrets from us. You know what we should do? I don't know if Intel does. In, I think Intel effect also in, gives you a better chance of like stealing uh, stuff from the enemy, or maybe they can only steal from you. But right now, if we're not building anything, we might as well crank the Intel effort up on everybody and jump ahead another month. Our top spies managed to get a hold of the blueprints from the new Austrian heavy cruiser Frundenberg, currently under construction. So eight seven-inch guns. Holy crap! That's like a dreadnought class cruiser. Heavy turrets on the secondary flanks. That's that's basically SMS Blucher. That's that's almost like a battle cruiser. The the belt armor is weak, and I guess it's only a seven inch gun, so not an eight inch gun. But still, that's a lot of main battery guns. I didn't know they could do that already. Um, huh. Let's see here. Still, no one has designed dreadnought stuff yet. But damn, those are those are some heavy cruisers to be a little bit worried about. Um. Our armor probably helps us out a bit there. Our ships have all transported to being where they need to be. Um, debating, I feel like it's probably too early to start mothballing ships. Um, I, I kind of have this I have this opinion, and I've talked to Tortuga, and he's kind of in line with it that like we shouldn't be scrapping or um, mothballing ships prematurely. Uh, just, you know, things like if we were to scrap a bunch of ships and just build a new design and it was only a five-year-old ship, that just wouldn't be acceptable politically in a real-world scenario. So we probably shouldn't game the system and do that. Um, I do think, 
I'm going to design a new light cruiser though. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do a light cruiser. We'll auto design up front and see what it does. 5,800 tons, 22 knots, two and a half belt. Okay, so some armor. Uh, I don't like that it's putting the main battery guns in casemates, or some of them in casemates. I think that's a horrible idea. Um, so we're going to go ahead and skip that. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to do that. Then let's go ahead and add a uh, port for, or, oh no, we don't want that. Not port forward. We're going to go ahead and add forward wing and starboard and port. So you can see that's a little bit aft of the, the main forward turret. And then we're going to add two in the starboard and port aft wing. Oh, whoops, those are different turrets. Um, aft, starboard aft wing, and port wing. There we go. So, Three guns up front, five guns in the back. Um, kind of like that design. There's seven-inch guns, so these are <laughs> this is almost worthy of, of countering that Austrian heavy cruiser in terms of firepower. Uh, all is okay with the design. Tertiary guns, two inchers, ten of them. Seems a little bit light. What if we bumped it to three? Put us in the red. But we can make it a little bit heavier. There's no reason we can't have a 6,000 ton light cruiser. I'm okay with that. The British built mammoth light cruisers for their colonial uh, squadrons. And frankly, I mean, realistically, we're probably going to have mammoth ones too if we were the French Empire and have a global uh, empire. We'll put them in turrets instead. I like that idea. I don't want them in casemates because if the seas are riding too high, if it's in a casemate, you could easily have it get swamped. Um, and I think we'll also, maybe we can, I don't know if you can add more torpedoes or not. Um, I don't know if you can do that. Port broadside, starboard broadside sub. Let's see if it lets us do that. All okay. Okay, we can do that. Awesome. So four torpedo tubes on this light cruiser with seven, no, I can't do math. Yeah, seven main battery guns. No, two, four... Six, eight, eight main battery guns at seven inches with a quality zero, which is kind of like the standard good quality gun. Not a ton of armor, but, you know, it's a light cruiser. The only thing is I want it to be 23 knots. That's what our Levasseur is. And if I do that, I'm way low on. So we'd have to make it a 6,600 ton light cruiser. That's not a light cruiser. Um... What if I were to cut the belt? Belt extended. Let's cut it to an inch. And because that's what the deck extended is anyway. Let's see what we save there. So we can save a hundred tons by cutting that. I don't want to cut the belt. An engine priority at normal, I think, is okay. We could save some weight if we turned it to a speed engine, but it's it's a cruiser. It's gotta have reliable speed. A reliable engine. Um, I guess I'm okay with that. I think eight main guns and, um, 6,500 tons, it's going to be an expensive light cruiser, but damn if it won't be a good commerce raider. We could save some weight by cutting torpedo tubes, but I feel like a cruiser should have good torpedo tubes. And we're going to call it the Sardinia class. If only because we conquered Sardinia, and we're going to rub it in the Italians' faces. Ship type identified as a heavy cruiser change type to... No. What if I do... Darn. So it's too heavily armored to be a light cruiser? I don't want it to be a heavy cruiser. What if we drop the main battery to six, six inches? It saves us quite a bit of weight. We can drop the size a bit. Actually, a lot. Okay, so we can drop it back under 5,000 tons. Pretty heavily under 5,000. 5,400 tons. Make it a six incher. They fire more rapidly. I'm I'm okay with that. We're not really going to get into a seven inch, you know, slugfest with a heavy cruiser. Still got a quality of zero. Went up the ammo to 110 rounds. Is that enough? Still says ammo's on the low side because you increase the rate of fire. Therefore, you need to store more ammo on the ship. We could make it 5,500 tons. That buys us some extra ammo. 150 rounds should be good. Cutting a little bit close on the weight, but 
you know, if we need to, we can always refit the ship as we develop new machinery and, and save some weight. Um, let's see. All okay. Ship saved as Sardinia. Yes. So the Sardinia-class light cruiser, 5,500 tons. If we compare that with the Lavasur, it's about $100,000 more a month to construct. Build time is still 20 months. Maintenance cost is 8,000 higher. We're going to build two of the damn things. And first ship initial cost, so we're building two of these things. Oh, no, I didn't make them long-range ships. They're only medium-range. Oh, well. Ooh, that was dumb. Anyway, so they're not long. They're not really commerce raiders. I guess you could say they're like f fleet scouts. I, they they can still raid with medium, medium range. I think um, the German light cruisers didn't really have uh, super range, and they still were effective. Plus, we'll probably be operating largely in the med, um, so the the range is less of an issue. I think. Um, I sure hope so because I'm building two of the damn things. Um, so that's gonna give us. Six light cruisers building. We'll have 20 light cruisers when all is said and done. That seems about right. And then those um, are the newer newer class. We can always upgrade it to a long-range ship when we refit and save some money also, I think. Plus, that frees these ships up to be commerce raiders. They're not as well suited to be in the line of battle with only 4-inch guns. Um, so we can use, like, the Cephex class in commerce raiding. And then we can use these guys as, like, fleet scouts and light forces in fleet actions with their heavier guns and and better armor and better speed. So that'll work out from a uh, design standpoint. We'll go ahead and jump forward another another month. The German government is interested in buying the rights to our side drums for 3.6 million. No. We're keeping that knowledge to ourselves. We don't need the money, frankly, right now. Breakthrough hull construction, high tensile steel, 1% weight savings. Okay. Um... Germans are rebuilding some of their ships. We could do that, but frankly, I don't think it's worth the money right now. Some error because of a class name. Our top spies managed to get a hold of blueprints for the British ship Le Leviathan. Currently under construction. A heavy cruiser. Four 8-inch guns. 14 7-inch guns. Jeez, all in turrets. 12 3 inches, Four torpedoes. Light armor, though, for a heavy cruiser. The Drake class. 10,400 tons. If we see how that compares. 14 7-inchers. Let's see how that compares to our um, our heavy cruiser class that we designed. So you can see the main batteries are going to be the same. We have 12 6-inchers as opposed to 7-inchers, so they do have a slight advantage there, uh, but our armor is <laughs> double theirs. Uh, so I think we'd, we'd hold up pretty well in a fight. Granted, we're 5,000 tons heavier, and we only have two of them, uh, but still, I think we'd hold up okay in a fight. Uh, the Badenburg, currently under construction... A Austrian battleship, only 10,000 tons, four nine-inchers. I don't need to worry about that. Jeez, our spies are getting all sorts of designs. The Fuji-class battleship now, 11,000 tons, two ten-inchers, whatever. 16 seven-inchers and casemates, you can see here. They'd be in a slightly different arrangement if they were uh, in turrets, I believe. With a relatively weak armor, these Japanese ships and Austrian ships are crappy. Um, research breakthrough turrets and gun mountings. Uh, gradual rate of fire improvements, that's always good. Um, yeah, so all things considered, I think we're doing okay. We'll probably need to design a new battleship here shortly. I just really want a new gun. The Prime Minister's return from a state visit to Great Britain, bringing home a proposal a proposal to solve outstanding sources of tensions between our nations. What's your response when asked for advice? We can never trust Great Britain to keep agreements. Better arms for conflict and beat them soundly. We should take this opportunity to promote their understanding between nations. I don't want to decrease my budget, and damn, I don't care about tensions. Subdivision of damage control, good. And there you go, an increased budget, because we're rattling the saber. Warmongering, I'm okay with. Um, yes, that's right, the historical gamer approves of warmongering. Um, yeah, I think we'll jump ahead another month. We'll probably build the new battleship at the start of the next year is what I'm guessing. I'm going to drop the uh, priority of submarines a little bit down to low. Um, not turrets and gun mountings, but just submarines. 
Um, and also we'll say, any sub do we want to do any submarine warfare? Do we want to drop that? We have no research in that field. I'm just trying to give this higher priority of naval guns a better chance of advancing. A new government wants to reduce naval spending in favor of social programs. Social programs? What? Get the Navy League to protest against the proposal. Try to get the proposal watered down. I'm the only the admiral. The politicians are in charge. No, screw that. Get the Navy League. Yeah, that's right. Central firing turret. Ooh, that might allow dreadnoughts, I think. I'm not sure. It's, no one else is designing it yet. Um... Yeah, I think we may blaze through to 1904. A scandal involving some important dignitaries from the U.S. has occurred at a party given it by on a cruise by one of your ships. How do you uh, handle the incident? Use it to embarrass the United States? Hush it up. Hmm. With just the United States, they don't really have a lot that I want. They're roughly on par with us in terms of battleship parity. They're, they're, at least they're building and we don't have any. They're also, I don't really feel like fighting in the United States. So we can hush it up. It doesn't hurt us. And it just reduces tensions with the United States. So I'm okay with that. Fire control, central firing. Enable central firing as a fire control ships on ships. Understand the gyroscope. I really don't care about that, you guys. I really want better main guns. Okay, Japanese heavy cruiser, four 10 inchers. Oh, damn, those are big. Big guns on a heavy cruiser. That's a pretty nice class right there. Still, the main armor is four inches seems to be the standard. Problems of torpedo prediction, okay. Gyroscope, breakthrough, great. I guess it makes our torpedoes better, I would guess. And we're into January of 1904, folks. We're through another year. We'll have new docks in a couple months. I think at that point we'll design the new battleship. We've got quite a bit of cash that's just sitting around. Um, we're building some of these heavy cruisers. I think I'm actually going to... I'm going to do this. I'm going to lay down two more of this new... I should just really do... I don't know why it's showing all these designs. That's annoying. Anyway, so I am going to build two more Sardinias, because I really like these light cruisers. And then I'm also going to build some destroyers. We've got some ships coming off the ways shortly that'll free this cash up. Um, okay, so that may be stupid, but I'm building new destroyers. I may start scrapping our older ones, but I'm definitely, I've gone a very light approach with my fleet. I've gone very heavy on the light warships uh, with six light cruisers building, including four of those new Sardinia classes, which I really like. Um, and then I'll have 22 when done, so only the British will have more light cruisers than us. We'll be stuck at 15 battleships, but, you know, no one else is even close to 15. Um, the Americans and the Germans will surpass us or equal us shortly. The British are already ahead of us, and there's no point in trying to catch up. So we're going to use this time. These light cruisers should be somewhat relevant for a while. The 23-knot speed could hurt us, uh, but the destroyers could be useful for a while, and they can at least be used as commerce raiders uh, or, or fleet scouts, although, again, the 23-knots may hurt us. I'm wondering if maybe we can speed them up in the future with different, uh, as new technologies arrive and we rebuild ships. But that's where we're at right now. All right, and that's going to do it for this episode of Rule the Waves, a succession series that I'm doing with Tortuga Power and XTRG. Uh, we have about two years left in power as France, and things are going pretty smoothly, I'd say, so far. Uh, for France, we've taken Sardinia, and we've begun to build a more modern cruiser fleet. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Tune in next time for the next episode. And until then, thanks for watching, and I'm out.